Thanks for the support as a channel member, Chris Graves. Nine games to go. The gap to safety is back down to five points again. There is an outside chance we might still do this. Inexplicably, the board are still satisfied with my performance as manager. If you're still satisfied with the performance of the series so far, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. All that kind of stuff. Let's, let's get on with it, though. This could be painful again. Hello and welcome to Club 2, Part 4 of Non-Need to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two massive home games. We're at home against Burton and Bolton. You'll remember in the last episode, I said I think home games are going to be key. And I mentioned before, we've got nine games left. But of those nine games we've got remaining, six of them are home games. As you can see, we're continuing to drop a few friendlies in to try and get us used to scoring goals against poor teams. And it, I, I hope it's working. Um, since you were last with me, we lost to Hull, but you'd expect us to lose to Hull. We drew away against Oldham, which is a game it would have been nice to be able to pick up a win in. They are below us in the league, but it was a nil-nil draw in the end. But then, crucially, massively, went to Oxford, who are the team we're chasing, and we beat them 4-3 at their place, leaving us five points behind them. We do need to keep an eye on Newport as well, who were also still above us, and, of course, Oldham from behind us, who we just couldn't find a way to beat but this game was just huge um, and Ollie Clark nearly ruined it for everybody I think this is the goal where it was just absolute insanity I want to show you the, bear in mind we're ahead in the match at this point it's a must win game for a team that are desperately trying to survive and our, one of our most senior players goes and does this um, I think this is the one so oh no this is this is not this is not the goal that's just, that's just a good goal hold on there, there was a there was a silly goal. Let me see it. I think it it might, must have been this one then. Yeah, here it is. Um, so, ball comes over. There's Clark. Has time. Ollie, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? But luckily, we did manage to force our way back into the game and pick up a late winner via the penalty spot. That also coincides with a tactical change. We we pursued with the the possession based system and that we're playing really well. Him sheet for long enough, but in the end, I've switched to probably a more appropriate tactic for the system for the situation that we're in, and we are now playing a direct counter attacking four three three, which just gets more of these players in positions that work better for them, and. I mean, we saw in that last game, it allowed us to score goals. It seemed to work. My issue is, I don't know if it's going to work at home. Um, I mean, Burton are favourites for that match. Bolton are favourites for that match. So I guess it's not as if we're a mid-table team and we're playing a little bit defensively at home. I imagine counter-attacking teams that are clearly better than us, whether we're home or away, isn't a bad idea. But I always I always feel a little bit uncomfortable counter-attacking um, at home, Joe Bud is on the. He's, I mean, I guess that's indi an indication that we've not got very many good players that he's had five man of the match awards. But considering the situation we're in, that's uh, that's quite good for him. Five man of the match awards is awesome. He's the only good player we've got. Um, so this is the team that we're putting out against Burton and desperately hoping that we actually win some of these home games that we're kind of relying on a little bit. So we're going with Townsend in goal, a back four of Kingsley, Lennon, Kilgore, and Blass, Clark. Still in the team, despite what he did. We all saw what he did. Uh, Clark in the team at the base of the midfield. Bud and Savage, our young midfielders ahead of him. Chapman and Garcia out wide and Davis up front playing as the pressing forward. I mean, he might as well not be there. Ten games now, no goals. Strikers are a problem here at Bristol Rovers. Uh, but we're <laughs> we'll, we'll keep playing him because I spent quarter of a million pounds on him. And I feel like the time has come where we actually do need a pressing forward in this lineup now. So it makes sense to to have him in there because it is what he's natural at. Um, ignore the critics. Yeah, stick it to the media. Let's assertively say the media have been on our backs. Let's go stick it to them. Yeah. For, for, for media, read comment section. I don't actually know how you, how you lot have responded to this. I think I mentioned in one of the previous videos. At the time of recording this, bearing in mind this is part four of Bristol Rovers, 
you don't even know I've left King's Lynn. It's a really weird time of year to be recording YouTube content because I try and batch stuff up so that I can have a couple of weeks off over Christmas and be more like a normal person. So I'm assuming you didn't want me to leave King's Lynn and I'm assuming every episode is shouldn't have left King's Lynn. It might be that you're all fully on board with it and I'm not making any sense, but I'm, I, I think I know you all well enough by now. There's, there's some of you who are properly sticking the boot in. Told you so, Kev. You should have never left King's Lynn. I know. If if it hadn't been for the money, I wouldn't have gone. But, you know, I haven't even... I'm deliberately not looking to see how they're getting on. Guarantee they're going to win the league. But I don't want to know. I don't want to... <laughs> if we get relegated and I don't get sacked somehow, we'll be in the same division as the next year. I suspect we'll get relegated, I'll get sacked, I'll end up back in the Conference North and there'll be a Football League team and then you all can laugh at me because I'll be earning less money as well. Um, right, let's try and aggress... No, not aggressive, assertive. We've been the better team here. No, see, that's probably not what I should be saying at this point. It's it's difficult because a nil-nil against this team is a good result, but it's no use to us at all. We've got to start winning games. As you can see, we've lost fewer games than all the other teams around us because we do grind out draws quite regularly. But it, it's too late for that now. We've got enough draws, thank you. Let's start winning some games. It's better for us to win, I don't know, what, we've got nine games left. It would be better for us to win four of them and lose the other five than it would be to draw all nine of them. That's one extra point. But it's, um, oh my word. I'm flabbergasted. I'm lost for words. I don't understand what I've just seen. Keenan Davis has scored a goal in a football match. Savage played it back to Blast. This is a goal created by Kev. They're three of my players combining. And that's a lovely finish from Davis. That's a quarter of a million pound finish. And what a hugely important goal it could end up being. If things stay as they are now, we're only four points behind Posh with, what, eight games still to go. That is doable. And this would be two wins on the bounce. I'm slowly but surely starting to believe Blass plays it across. To, it ends up with Clark. Um, and it's out wide with Chapman. Chapman beats his man. This is beautiful. I thought he'd scored. I thought he'd scored an absolute worldie. It hits the inside of the post and bounces out. But goodness me, was that that was good. That was really good from Chapman. And we're playing really well. Our wingers, not so much, but you know. Let's not worry too much about them. We need to make some changes. I am going to... We'll bring Benyu on on that side. We're going to bring Riley on on that side. Riley really doesn't like playing... I mean, he's not any good at any... Oh, he's right. I'm confusing Riley with the other guy who's an attacking midfielder. who's not even on the bench today. Burke is the one who would normally go out there. But for some reason... We all know the reason. Kev doesn't pick his bench. He's not on the bench. So Sinclair can come on... And, I mean, we'll just play him as the winger. We're not going to mess around too much. So Jerome Sinclair, another man from the Keelan Davis School of Attacking Football um, and has only got his one goal all season still. Uh, but he's playing out wide now. He's a winger these days, so it doesn't matter if he's not going to score goals. Savage also not having the best of games. A go-go can come on for him in midfield. Um, we'll just bring him on as a... We'll do that. We'll just really try and try and tighten up for the last 10 minutes of this game this this would be huge cross everything boys and girls if we can make it to the end of this match without conceding a goal which is one of the few things we're quite good at we are quite good at defending if we can make it to the end of the match without conceding this is massive blast is in here blast probably should have squared it to davis who was salivating at the prospect of a second goal in a bristol rovers shirt uh, but we're into the final seconds. We've won two football matches in a row. The, the, I'm, mm, I, this is not the narrative I was expecting today. I genuinely thought I might be sacked in this episode. But we've won two games in a row. The comeback is on, boys and girls. Posh lost. It's only three points. The gap is down to three points. 
No changes for the Bolton game then, obviously. And I've just noticed, I'm, pro I'm learning the teams who are around us. Look at the next two matches. We've got Gillingham, bottom of the league, and then Posh, the team that we're chasing. I'd planned to just go straight through and then just show Shrewsbury and Newport, but I think we're just going to have to, we're going to have to do Gillingham and Posh tomorrow. We could be, by this time tomorrow, we could be mid-table. We're not going to be mid-table. But that, is an exciting run of fixtures. But of course, we need to beat Bolton first. So let's make it three wins in the... We could we could conceivably win five games in a row here, which, I mean, I don't expect us to beat Bolton, but we've got the chance to get revenge on them. We owe Bolton after what happened in our last match. That's motivated everybody. We're slowly but surely discovering this thing called form that I don't know, I'm certainly not familiar with it anymore. It's been a long time since I've experienced it. But, whoo, my goodness me. Even a draw here is fine. But I'd love a win. Kingsley with the free kick. Kilgore's there! Alfie Kilgore scores! Ooh. I tell you what, if we pull this off, this is much more fun than just romping to a league title with Kingsley. In. Because this will be, I've said it before, this will be my finest achievement in Football Manager. Look at that league table now. It's a one point gap between us and Posh. Our next two games are Gillingham and Posh. <laughs> I need to just chew my arms. I'm so excited. Goodness me. I realise if I get too excited, the commentary isn't quite what it could be. But good. <laughs> Stop saying goodness me. You're not a granddad. Start swearing on the channel, for goodness sake. So you stop using that G... Don't use the G word anymore. Oh, right. I don't know what... To, just don't get complacent. Probably should have been an assertive don't get complacent. But same, same rules of engagement as the last match, lads. Just let's not concede a goal before the end of the game now. We've nicked our goal. We're good at the back. Let's, I don't know what Chapman's trying to do there, which is something Bristol Rovers fans have been saying a lot this season, even before we signed Harry. Uh, but we ju just don't concede now. Let's not get too ambitious. Let's not get too fancy. I'm tempted to bring a go-go on as the ball winning midfielder in midfield now, just to tighten things up even more than they already are. Uh, but Bolton are attacking here, which isn't necessarily a worry in and of itself, unless they do well at it. Um, they're obviously see this. What it always it's always going to worry me. I love a possession based system, and obviously we're not going to get that playing counter attacking at home the way we are. But it's not about playing nice football now. It's about grinding out results for the last eight games of the season, and we're getting good at grinding. Right, substitution o'clock is quickly approaching. Bolton have got another attack. And I think this is going to be kind of the theme of this second half. Just relentless Bolton attacking as they try and get back into this game. Which, quite frankly, I don't know why they're that bothered. They're not going to get promoted. They're not going to get relegated. They're just a mid-table team. Just let us have this, Bolton, for goodness sake. We need this more than you do. Just let us have our points. Can we pay them off or something? We've, got, we've still got that money from selling that player in the summer. Before I arrived, we must have a hundred grand we could sling them to pay them off and stop that from happening. Still not a disaster. Remember, I said before the game, if we draw this one, that's fine. That's then a four game unbeaten run. And then we go to Gillingham and Posh. And as long as we win those two, we'd absolutely take, what would that be? We'd have taken 14 points from that run of six games before it started. We'd, I'd have absolutely bitten your arm off for that. So a draw's not a disaster. Right, Sinclair can come on and play on the wing again. He did that in the last game and was lovely at it. Savage, I'm, I'm making these changes anyway. Just do it anyway. What's the worst that can happen? We might still break away and get another goal. But for now, let's not concede anymore. Because the momentum of an unbeaten run is super important. And I'm hoping Bolton, now they've got their equaliser, are less are less bothered. I might even just ask for a little, a little ten minutes of passion. I know we're defending, but let's just let's just see. Let's just test the water a little bit. Um, we're going to bring Ben you on for Chapman on that left hand side, and just we're happy with a one one. We will we'll take a final whistle now if it's offered, but just on the off chance, let's get a penalty or a corner or just something where we can sneak a goal. 
that's fine. That's no reason to panic. That's four games unbeaten. We were unlucky. But now we need to make sure we're super lucky in tomorrow's matches because they are huge. We play Gillingham. We play Posh. We could be... I mean, conceivably, we could be up to like 19th by the end of tomorrow's episode if it goes the way it should go. Gillingham away. Is it Peterborough? Oh, it's Posh away as well. See, that's more difficult because it's away from home. But... That's been, we've got the start of a decent run of form going. And then even if tomorrow doesn't go to plan, four of the final five games are home matches. I'm starting to believe, boys and girls. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.